Hey guys, what's up? I'm going to show you today how to change the oil on a 2016 Mustang GT. Uh, this is my wife's car. It's really dirty right now, so please excuse how dirty it is. Uh, I started by pulling it up on some race ramps. I've got my jack and jack stands occupied with my ZR1 in the garage here, so we're going to work on this and I'll show you step by step kind of what you need to do. These are the tools you're going to need. Of course, you're going to need a drain pan. But depending on how tight your filter wrench is on, you're going to need a filter wrench and then a 15 millimeter and a 7 millimeter to get the access panel open for the filter. All right, so under the car, you're going to have a 15 millimeter bolt that is right here at the end of the oil pan. And then you're going to have a 7 millimeter bolt right here, right there, actually and you're going to loosen that up and that's going to give you access to the filter. All right, so I got the plug out, oil's draining. I'm going to let that sit there for a little bit and then I'll go ahead and remove that seven millimeter after I tighten the bolt back up. Uh, one thing you want to check, make sure the gasket's good on your bolt. Um, mine looks pretty good. I'm going to clean out the threads a little bit. They look kind of dirty. Uh, but make sure you clean this off before you put it back in. Once I reinstall it, then I'll go ahead, like I said, and take the filter off after I move the pan up here because it's going to drip quite a bit. Alright, when you're putting the filter or the plug back in, you need to make sure that you don't cross thread it. Make sure that you thread it in really easy. You don't want to cross thread anything in an oil pan. It's just a pain to replace if you have to. And then when you're tightening it back up, just make sure that you snug it. You don't need to put an impact on it. Just, just make sure it's nice and snug. All right, now we're ready to take this seven millimeter bolt out. That's gonna open this up so we can get to the filter. One thing with any oil change you wanna make sure of is the O-ring is still on the filter. You don't want to put a double O-ring, basically the one off your old filter and the one on the new filter on back on the car, because if you do, it'll leak. Um, or even come unthreaded and just leave you stranded somewhere. So make sure that the, the O-ring is still on the filter. You can also check up to make sure it's not on the actual block itself. All right, so everybody has their own preference on filters and oil, and everybody has their own opinion. I personally like Mobile One. used it in just about everything I own, um, either that or Royal Purple. So I'm going to put Mobile One full synthetic in it. It is 520 oil. I know that's kind of weird, but that's what these 5.0s take. And then I also use Wix filters, um, just a preference. You know, you can use whatever Mustang. The Mustang manual actually calls for a synthetic blend from Motorcraft. Um, this is just, like I said, my preference. Now, one of the things I like to do on my filters is I will take a little bit of the old oil and not a lot, just enough to get your finger wet and go around the rim of the gasket. Some people don't do this. Some people use new oil. I've always used just a little bit of old oil. Uh, it just softens that gasket up, but uh, that's total preference. One thing I do also is I make sure that I clean off and make sure again that the old oil ring's gone, but clean that off and then install the new filter. Now you don't have to get this super tight. You don't generally need a wrench. Sometimes your hands are oily, so you can use a filter wrench just to tighten it, just to make it snug. Don't get it too tight. All right, we're all done on the bottom of the car. Everything's tightened back up, put back into place. Now we're going to move up here, um, take the oil fill cap off. Um, I like to use a funnel. Some people can pour without spilling. I'm not one of those guys. So uh, use a funnel. I always put... Like the car says it takes eight and a half quarts, I'm gonna put seven and a half in and then check it before I start it. Now, keep in mind the filter has to fill up so it's gonna draw at least half a quart into that filter. Uh, I just don't wanna overfill it so I always add like a quart less. Um, check it, if it still looks low on the dipstick, then I'll put another half quart in it and then I start it and then I check it again once it's ran for a couple seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, we got all the oil in. Uh, you're going to come over to the opposite side of the motor from where you filled it to so over here. Um, down below, you'll see a dipstick. We're going to pull that out and check it. I went ahead and started it um, and checked it. It was about a quarter of a quart low. I added another quarter of a quart. And next, we'll show you how to reset the oil sender. 
So in the dash, you're going to have a monitor, basically an oil life monitor. Uh, it, it's more based off time than it is anything. So don't don't go by that. Go by your regular mileage. I try to change mine between three and five thousand since I'm using synthetic. All right, so we're completely changed oil wise. Now we need to show you how to change the or reset the oil temp, the oil sensor. Um, or the display that shows how much oil life you have remaining. So from the main menu here, you're gonna go down to settings, select okay. You're gonna to go to vehicle, select okay. And then if you go down to oil life reset, select okay. And then you just hold the okay button down while it resets and boom, we're at 100%. So we are all finished. Make sure that there's no leaks under the car. Um, that you got everything tight and then I always like to check my oil after it runs for about five minutes just to make sure that you know there's not a leak maybe you can't see or I mean anything could possibly go wrong I guess but just make sure that uh, no leaks and you're good to go